Battlefield 6, it needs to be a modern day shooter game. That's my opinion, and I think a lot of people would agree with me. After two historical shooter games in a row, Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5, fans like myself are clamouring for a return to the modern day shooter scene. Battlefield 1 depicted World War 1 in a way that no one really expected of DICE at the time, and unfortunately Battlefield 5 just didn't hit the mark for a huge number of reasons around its depiction of World War 2. So I think the time is right for a return to a modern setting. Now recently I'm sure you've heard the rumours about the next Call of Duty game this year being called Black Ops Cold War. And that signals a sort of semi-reboot of the Black Ops sub-franchise by taking the action back to the 1960s and 70s. And that's where the first game really took off. And I think it leaves the door open for Battlefield 6 to kind of signal its intent that it will be the next big modern shooter game to hit the market in 2021. And we're going to talk about a little bit of that today. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please consider clicking the subscribe button and joining the channel. I'll be making lots more Battlefield 3, 4, 1, 5 and 6 videos over the next couple of months. We're going all the way across the franchise at the moment because I think there's a lot to experience, even at what is quite a low point, I think. Okay, so, modern setting Battlefield game. Where do we really start here? First of all, I think combining aspects of the last few games and taking forward what has been very well received and what has become valuable in each game, I think that's a pretty good way to go. If Battlefield 6 is set to be a modern day shooter, then the last game in that framework that we can really look to is Battlefield 4. And it's actually one of the best places to look for inspiration because I believe it's the most recent game in the franchise that really felt like a sandbox environment that we've come to expect from the franchise. We had these huge maps, a massive collection of weapons across several different categories, lots of vehicles, air, land and sea combat, urban environments, wide open rural locations, tons of gadgets that really spiced up the action, attachments for weapons out the wazoo, destruction on large and small scale, it had pretty much everything. By the end of its life, Battlefield 4, I think, ticked almost every single box for any type of Battlefield player. If you liked flying jets and helicopters, then most of the maps in the game supported that playstyle. If you were mainly an infantry soldier, then you could pretty much join any server, and there would be something for you to engage in. If you liked playing with your friends in boats, there was an entire DLC dedicated to naval warfare. If you liked slightly more futuristic combat, then DICE built you an entire sequel DLC to Battlefield 2142, the Final Stand DLC. As I said, Battlefield 4 gave almost every player of Battlefield something to enjoy, and at the same time, which is what is most impressive here, it managed to combine all of those elements into one game and keep most people happy. However, Battlefield 4 clearly wasn't perfect. Throughout the first year of support, the game suffered from numerous performance issues and bugs that really marred the experience. And it wasn't until year two of support, when DICE actually extended support alongside Hardline, that most people really began to appreciate the extra work that was being put in. And it kind of mirrored what happened in Battlefield 5 throughout its first year, where it was very buggy and very temperamental. It's just unfortunately, Battlefield 5 never really made it beyond that point. There was never really the same kind of recovery that we saw in the Battlefield 4 days. Now, if you asked players of Battlefield 4 or maybe people who've joined the franchise after Battlefield 4 what the game was really like in its first year of support, you might find a lot of people have actually forgotten how bad Battlefield 4 was from a technical standpoint when it launched. The pressure that DICE put on themselves launching that game, not only for what was the current generation of consoles, the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 and PC as well, but they also went and developed it for the next generation consoles at the same time, the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4. And that was just too much work. And that was perhaps the leading reason why the game suffered so badly at first. A new generation of consoles means new hardware to work with, yes. But it also means a new set of tools to work with and almost a clean slate when it comes to getting the most out of that hardware, since you've never developed for it before. No game that really launches with a brand new set of consoles is going to truly take advantage of the hardware inside those consoles. 
because it takes a couple of years for that knowledge to be built back up again. The knowledge that you have on the old generation consoles. And Battlefield 4 really suffered there. But it doesn't look like Battlefield 6 will have the same kind of problems. At least I hope it doesn't anyway. With it launching a whole year after the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5 come onto the market at the end of 2020. So this, in theory, that could give the DICE team a little bit more time to kind of understand what they're working with. And you can be sure that the team is already working with development samples of these next generation consoles and development of the console versions of Battlefield 6, they will be underway. Perhaps the extra time before the launch compared to other games that are launching in late 2020, that will give DICE a chance to produce something more technically impressive and stable. And that would be in stark contrast to what happened with Battlefield 4. That time, EA decided to go all in with the new consoles on day one to try and make Battlefield 4 one of the titles that gamers should be picking up. This time around, EA are playing it a little bit more cautiously and they're launching most of their next-gen titles next year. Now, with Battlefield 4 being the last modern title in the Battlefield series, and with many elements of Battlefield games being shared as things move forwards, but also the game being separated by two historical and perhaps more technically impressive titles at the same time, it kind of leads me feeling that a lot of ideas and elements from Battlefield 4, 1 and 5, they'd all have to be translated forwards into Battlefield 6. And if you look at past games in the franchise as examples, it is highly likely that this new game is going to run on a new or updated build of the Frostbite engine. Battlefield 1 took that leap after Battlefield 4, it moved on to a new Frostbite version. And with that came a truly astonishing jump forwards in graphical fidelity, which I think everyone really appreciated. But also, it was actually a regression in the immediate feature set that DICE could actually work with. Many of the elements that Battlefield 4 implemented after its launch, they failed to make it directly into Battlefield 1. And that is likely because those elements were built in whatever version of Frostbite Battlefield 4 ran on and they could not simply be dragged and dropped into the new version for Battlefield 1. All of those things, they had to be built again, and in many cases for Battlefield 1, they weren't built again, or newer implementations were added in their place. Now, Battlefield 5 also struggled with this, despite the game not appearing to make the same engine jump that was made for Battlefield 1. But we all know the story about Battlefield 5 not having enough development time, so likely that is the culprit for that game's scenario. Now, for Battlefield 6, there's a chance again that we won't see so much of that missing feature set. There's more time for the DICE team to remake what worked from previous games and build those features into Battlefield 6 from the very start. And I say a chance because, well, I don't want to get my hopes up for all these awesome upgrades and implementations and then them not arrive again, as was the case from Battlefield 4 to Battlefield 1. In many ways, losing the battle log client and massively scaling back the server system Battlefield 1 was quite a downgrade technically from Battlefield 4, but it made up for things in other areas. It's just they weren't sort of in parity with each other. There were features missing and features gained, but they felt like very, very different games. But that comes from moving from one engine version to another, and it's not just simple to move stuff between older versions and newer versions. But I do hope that the added time that DICE has means that they can bring forward some of those really important technical implementations and build on them for Battlefield 6. And then there was something else I was thinking about the other day, it's just the freedom that DICE would have when creating a modern day shooter. With games like Battlefield Bad Company and Bad Company 2, the DICE team not only made a modern day shooter with all the modern day equipment and weapons that come with that, but they created a fictional narrative as well. Something that they could build a world around, but they grounded it in the here and now, in modern day. Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4 also did this, grounding the story in modern day, but crafting a different story than what is actually real, leaving them free from any elements where they might need to be authentic or accurate to a certain event that has happened here in the real world. Battlefield 1 and Battlefield 5 both depicted world wars, World War 1 and World War 2, and they were both extremely important events in our history. 
And with Battlefield 1, DICE did a fantastic job at balancing a respect towards the conflict and those who fought for their country and their people, and crafting a game that people would enjoy playing. Battlefield 5, well, it did the complete opposite. And because DICE chose to warp the real historical aspects of the war in a way that didn't properly respect what happened, they were criticised for it, and it hurt the game massively from the moment it was revealed. Battlefield 6, if it's to be a modern day setting, likely that won't happen again. Battlefield 4 created the War of 2020. That was the setting for Battlefield 4. It was this war between the US, China and Russia. It was a fictional war, but it was set in the modern day, very near future. Battlefield 6, I think is likely to do something similar, creating a fictional war, but grounding it in a modern setting. And that would allow DICE to do almost whatever they wanted to set up a narrative that they could build a shooter game from. Overall here, I am pretty confident that DICE will return the Battlefield franchise to a modern day or very near future setting, bringing in familiar and relatable equipment and locations that will allow them to build that sandbox, large-scale experience that players of Battlefield games will enjoy. I think it's important after the near disaster that has been Battlefield 5 that DICE builds something that is more predictable perhaps, but something they can really execute strongly. Modern Warfare for the Call of Duty franchise is a great example of something like this. It is a soft reboot of the sub-franchise, it utilises a lot of elements from older titles that Infinity Ward knew would work well, and then that's gained the goodwill of the player base. And then after launch, they've now started to experiment with new ideas and new gameplay options, with Warzone being the best example. But when it launched, everyone was really excited for it because it signalled the Call of Duty franchise was returning to one of the best moments that it had ever experienced, the Modern Warfare franchise. Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4, those are the days of massive standout for the Battlefield franchise, and I think DICE would do well to lean into that when building and crafting their next big title. Anyway, thanks very much for watching. Just my thoughts on the topic of Battlefield 6 at the moment. I really do hope it is a modern day shooter. But let me know what you think down below in the comments and leave me a rating as well. It is always appreciated. And I'll catch you all in the next one.